Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be talking about the Yukon River in North America. Please remember to like and subscribe. Now let's get right into it. Fact 1. Many names. The Yukon River traverses through a vast territory that's populated by indigenous people before the Europeans discovered this area. The indigenous people have many different names for this river. Because this river is a, such a prominent geographical feature of this area, you can understand that everyone had a different name for it. And Yukon is one of the names that the, one of the tribes use. However, there are many other names. For example, Kukipak, Kukpak, Yukon, Yikon, Ukon, and so forth. There are many different names because there are so many different nations and tribes that live here. And they probably all depend on the river one way or the other. And so as a result, they all have their own names and reverence toward this mighty river. Alright, let's get into the next fact. Fact 2. Runs across the entire Alaska. As I mentioned, this is a really large river. In fact, so large and so long that it traverses through the entire width of the Alaskan state. The river actually starts in Yukon, the province in Canada that's named after the river. And the river continues to traverse through the interior of Alaska all the way to Bering Sea. And so you can imagine Alaska being a very large state and this river traversing the entire width of the state shows you how large and how long this river is. In fact, this river has become such an important part of the Alaskan ecosystem as well as the people that used to live there before the Europeans came over. Many indigenous people who lived there settled upon the banks of the river and its tributaries. So as you can see, this river is extremely important to the geographical region and to the entire Alaskan ecosystem. It supports the populations along the river and was once used as a, the only main thoroughfare because there was no roads in this area and this river was the only really good way to traverse through Alaska. Alright, let's get into the next fact. Fact 3. Chinook Salmon The river, in addition to all its sediments and other characteristics, contained a variety of fish with the most important one being the Chinook Salmon. The Chinook Salmon flows and swims through the Yukon River, migrates through it, and as a result, is becoming an important part of the people's food source upon the river. The river contains a large quantity of Chinook Salmon seen here in this picture, and as they migrate every year, the people try to take advantage of the situation and harvest them. Not just the people though, all the other animals in the Alaskan interior also prey on the Chinook salmon for food. So you can see the Yukon River is incredibly important because it allows the Ch Chinook salmon to migrate as well as in the middle of doing so providing food source to people and animals all around them. Without the river, the Chinook salmon would not be able to exist and migrate in this area. Alright, let's get into the next fact. Fact 4. Bering Sea. As I quickly mentioned in the previous sections, the Yukon River starts from the interior of Canada, traverses through the entire width of Alaska, and empties out into the Bering Sea to the west. The Bering Sea is a cold arctic-like body of water and there's a huge delta where the Yukon River enters the Bering Sea. Because the Yukon River is so massive and with such massive flow of water, where the Yukon River empties into the Bering Sea is a very large delta. And this should be expected because the river is quite large and pretty powerful in terms of the flow rate. It's not a small 
slow flowing river. This river is fast flowing and carry large quantities of water as it traverses through the interior of Alaska and into the Bering Sea. In the winter times, the Bering Sea also freezes over, and as a result, the Yukon River, where it empties into the Bering Sea, still gets frozen during the winter times. Despite the massive flow, the top of the river and also top of the ocean accumulates ice and eventually freezes to a point where water flow cannot be observed. The Yukon River Delta that empties into the Bering Sea also supports a large amount of community and people there. This is likely because eventually everything in the river flows to that area. Alright, let's get into the next and final fact. Only four bridges. Despite the massive length of the Yukon River, there's only actually four bridges that cross them. It's very interesting that in this giant river, there's only four bridge crossings that could be made. Everywhere else, you need a boat. Or in the winter when it freezes over, you need to use a snow machine. And so I think part of the reason why there's only four bridges is simply there's not enough population to support a need of massive bridges across the river. But unfortunately, that's bad for the people who live there. Because now it's rather difficult to cross the river if you don't have a boat or you have to wait for the winter when the river freezes over. And so I think the people who live there probably all are very familiar with the river and have boats or water vessels that they have in order to use it. Because if you think about it, if there's no bridge crossing where you are and you need to cross the river, you definitely need a boat. And so I think a boat is not a luxury over there, but rather a very necessity item. All right, that's it for my video today. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. See you next time.